Hi, it's Rhoda, and I'm here in the BA test kitchen to have a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're putting Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Carla Hall's chicken fried steak with sausage cream gravy. I'm challenging Chris to recreate this dish using every ingredient in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, smell it, but at no point will he be able to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll be back to see his final creation, and I'll be the judge. It's like a piece of bread with like pickle and like a little bit of onion. And then there's like a crispy bit under there. It's like, is this a sandwich? Tastes like raw onion, raw white onion. Like this doesn't, this is, this is not like wonder bread, right? This smells like yeast bread. It feels like it was probably toasted. Getting a little bit of like a dried out sort of texture against the side of the bread. Oh, jeez. Took its clothes off here. Very crisp, breaded coating. We could be getting a little bit of cayenne or paprika, garlic, and or onion powder. It's staying monumentally crispy. Like This is actually like a pretty intimidating bit of culinary magic kind of going on here. Now, in something like a chicken cutlet, you're very often going to find an egg wash used as your liquid component. I don't know if that's super common with what I think this is. A seemingly flat pounded piece of beef. As it cooks, it kind of contracts, those muscle fibers tighten. I have a feeling like this really started out fairly thin. Okay, and now there's real situation happening here. Wow, so much black pepper in here. It's just like, <laughs> tastes like sausage gravy. Could it be a breakfast sausage just with like massive application of black pepper and maybe some cayenne as well? I think this is chicken fried steak, super American, Southern. Not sure about the chef. That's it for this tasting and it is time to make a shopping list. Jesus Christ. At least yell action or something. What cut of steak do you chicken fry? So what is chicken fry? Why is it not steak fry? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, shopping list. Sirloin steak, question mark, but some options would be kind of awesome on this. Buttermilk for the dredge. We need some AP flour. Let's also get like some Wondra flour. It's a flour made from like very soft wheat. Onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, cayenne, breakfast sausage, milk cream. I don't think we need eggs. Like, can I just like make that statement? The, the, the truth is, I mean, it's very hard to tell. It didn't taste obviously eggy, but to what degree does like a chicken cutlet taste eggy? Anyway, I don't know. It's fine. Let's just get eggs. So then we also need white sandwich bread, red onion, yellow onion, sour pickles. Somebody's going to go out, shop these ingredients, and I will have my first shot at the dish. We're gonna get the meat brining, assemble the dredge, and then we're gonna make the gravy. Before we do that, somebody f***ed up. <laughs> What's this? What's all this? Look at the last radius of the spatter. Oil all over. This is almost certainly not a deep fried item. I mean, this whole thing could be a setup. This could be one big brick in the set of the Truman Show that my life has become, okay? You know where you have oil sloshed out of something? It's when you fry something in cast iron, but like low. Everything's a fucking clue. That's why you smell the inside of the cloche. That's why you lick the surfaces when you come into the test kitchen before the production team is here, okay? Because everything's a So we're gonna start with meat. This is sirloin steak, okay? And then this is a top loin steak has a little bit more intramuscular fat, also looks just by its very nature a little bit more tender to me. This to me looks like a 
top loin steak that has been pounded out aggressively, like Sam the Butcher style, just like sat there and like whacked away at it, you know, while somebody waited in line. I wanna use this top loin steak. I'm cutting it in half just to give it a head start. Cause we want to end up in a very thin place, keep it as even as I can, and then we pound. Spiky side of the meat mallet is gonna increase the tenderizing effect. If you take this too far, the meat's just gonna start falling apart. It's my one nice sweater, you know? This is just too big. You could easily turn this into two pieces, something like that, you know? I don't think there's any harm in doing a piece of top loin, but also doing a piece of cube steak. It's like this like looks pretty damn good to me. Leaner, feels a little more tender. I'm gonna go with both of these and see how they are side by side. Now we're gonna move on to our buttermilk brine. <laughs> Big picture, the meat is ultimately gonna hang out in two different bowls. One is gonna contain a buttermilk brine, the other is gonna be the dry dredging mix. I'm just gonna whack a bunch of this in here and I'm gonna season it up with salt and pepper, buttermilk, helps tenderize meats because of the acidity, which acts on the protein in the meat. Cube steak is in, top loin. Top round. Shit. Top round, top cube, top gun. Greatest movie of all time. That's the brine portion. This is gonna be the dredging mix. You can use a range of ingredients in dried dredges, flour being one of them. You can also use starches for like Korean style fried chicken. I feel like that is more of like a starch based coating. It's like very thin, but very crispy. Wonder flour does have a tendency to show up a lot in Southern foods. Flour is raw. Please cook fully before enjoying. Um, it's like, what happened that they had to start printing that on the box, you know? They're talking about it mostly as being something to use in gravies, so I don't know. Should we use it in the gravy? Maybe. Like, let's go for it and see. But think that you'd want a higher protein flour, so I'm sticking with all purpose for that. A Little bit of cayenne. I feel good about onion powder, garlic powder. Onion powder gives earthiness, it gives umami. Garlic powder is really assertive. They're not interchangeable for their fresh counterparts, but they both do have like wonderful transformative qualities. Paprika is gonna provide an ability to pick up like that color you probably want. Great. Also wanna do a lot of black pepper here. And then we need to put some salt in there too. Steak is staying in the brine until we're ready to fry. Got the dredge right here, just putting those aside. The main components that I was tasting in the gravy were some kind of roux thickened dairy, kind of fatty ground pork, and a lot of black pepper. I would probably expect to find some onion and probably some garlic in there as well. Like if it is a sausage meat that's in that gravy, it's probably breakfast sausage. But to be totally honest, there was so much black pepper in there. It made me want to sneeze immediately when I ate it. I don't know that I would be able to say 100% if it's like ground pork or breakfast sausage anyway. I'm looking to put a little bit of color on this ground pork, bring out as much flavor from it as possible. One thing I really noticed with this gravy is that the meat was broken up really finely. If you try to break up the meat too quickly, it kind of inhibits browning a little bit. Like that's good. That's where a lot of flavor is gonna come from. Put in the onion and garlic on top of that, let it sweat out and then build the sauce from there. Craving a little bit more fat from it. I'm just gonna go with a little bit more oil. And this is where it's like, did I need more meat to create more fat? Might season this with a little bit of salt. We're pretty much at the point where I think we could introduce some black pepper, have that fat in the skillet. It's gonna help really kind of bloom and activate its flavor. Man, you smell it. Woo! This Wonder Flower is some wild stuff. It feels coarser, almost a little bit semolina-like. A cup of milk here. As comes to a boil, it's thickening. This is pleasantly thick. Not f***ing bad. I'm gonna put it on the back burner, so to speak. We can move on to frying of the steak. Steak has been in the brine about half an hour or so, I'd say. So I know about this, I've just never done it. Here's what I wanna try. 
I'm gonna take a couple tablespoons of this and put it in the dry mix. Just gonna create some of these kind of like clumpy moments that are then gonna hopefully adhere to the steak. That's our cube steak. Pack on this mixture, and get as much of it to adhere. Next one, we're gonna actually uh, season first. Then this is the top round. Got like a pretty nice thick coating. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. I'm not hating that at all, to be honest. I feel like we want to get that into the oil. At 360, we're going in. Bad idea to put these in at the same time? Probably. I'm liking the color. I'm liking these ripples. All this really violent bubbling make, is making it look like maybe not quite the level of adhesion I might need here. But I don't know, maybe it's gonna crisp up a little bit and solidify as it sort of cools. So the look of this one, which is the top round, looks a little better to me. I got the gravy, like a pretty tight little gravy situation here. I have like my lightly toasted bread. Yeah, this is round one. I I'm not hating it. I feel like maybe drying off the steak a little bit more before putting it in the coating. I don't know. Ingredients, I'll go with a 78%. There could be more things in the brine or not. I feel like there could be more things in the gravy or not. Technique I feel pretty good about. Pounded steak, dredged, wet brine. I'd say like maybe an 86. In terms of appearance, I feel like pretty good about that. I think it's like the right elements, maybe even a 90. Flavor wise, I don't think I'm so far off. The meat's like pretty tender. I mean, it's not spa food, you know what I mean? Maybe an 85. Frankly, go with even more black pepper. And maybe we should do the touch of cayenne in there and just wake everything up. So that averages me out to an 85. On this piece of paper are my actual scores. Ooh. I'm actually looking pretty good on ingredients. Technique is where I'm the shortest. Maybe it's not a wet brine because I was a little bit upset by how much moisture was coming out of that meat, you know? It didn't seem like it, but trust me, I was feeling really upset. Also curious about this 87 for appearance. Maybe I was wrong about the toasting of the bread. And wouldn't it just be like some like weird friggin' southern thing to just have a slice of untoasted bread on there with some pickles on top. I've got one more tasting of the original dish and then I have one more shot to get it right before it has to be judged. I just wanna see how big this sucker is. We're not quite edge to edge on the plate here, but we're getting close. I'm gonna dig into the gravy here. Wow, there's just so much black pepper in this. Just so much black pepper in here, but there also could be some cayenne, giving just like a little bit of a brightness, really opening up the flavor. Yeah, there's this slight kind of like gummy coating on the meat. What if it's the dredge, but split into two things? So first the meat goes into the dry mixture, then into egg, and then into the dredge. That's what I'm wondering. I feel good about the cube steak, but I think we need to change up this process a little bit. Maybe it is about treating it a little bit more like a cutlet of sorts. And then the bread, yeah, I don't think the bread was toasted. Definitely some changes to be made here in terms of my technique, and I've got one more shot to get this right before I have to put this up for judging. So last time we made a buttermilk brine that the meat sat in before going into the dredge. This time we're just making a dredge. We're gonna put egg as our wash and then the meat is gonna go dredge into the egg and then from the egg back into the dredge. And that's it. I don't really know that I'm gonna make changes with it so much. I like the paprika. I like garlic and onion powder. I like the little bit of cayenne, and I like the black pepper. I like the black pepper. I like the, ah, there we go. Didn't feel like it was anything that was like a big smoking gun I needed to take out. I think the buttermilk brine was introducing a little bit too much moisture. 
I'm really just doing the egg instead. And maybe that's gonna give me a little bit more of that crispiness I'm looking for, and a little bit more of that adhesion as well. I wanna let this stuff sit while I work on the gravy. I really didn't taste onion and garlic in the gravy. I just feel like they're there. It's honestly hard to taste anything other than black pepper. I was clearly off by a number of points in terms of my ingredient score. I do think and have said from the beginning that this could be breakfast sausage here. Breakfast sausage is introducing a little bit of sweetness in the form of sugar in this case. Sometimes it might be maple syrup. Olive oil feels wrong, so I'm just sticking with veg oil here. Look at the increased browning on the meat. The sugar caramelizes. You can probably expect like a slight kind of deepening of flavor and maybe just an overall intensifying. It's almost to the point where I just don't think we have to like do the whole thing with the aromatics and all of that. I think we're gonna get like quite a bit of flavor here throw the black pepper in now. Toast it out. I'm feeling good about the amount of fattiness that's in here too. So that's milk going in. I'm going with cayenne. Now I'm not trying to make it like overtly chili spicy. I just want to really kind of brighten and lift the flavor a little bit. Yeah, the cayenne just like rounds out all those edges of the black pepper wakes up the flavor. Like, I actually feel pretty good about the flavor at this point. All right, so we wanna get the meat going. I wanna go bigger than I had last time. I probably wanna, you know, have it be a little past the edge of the plate knowing it's gonna shrink up. So we're gonna go salt and pepper going in the dredge here. Now it's going into beaten egg. This is gonna do a similar thing, hopefully that the buttermilk was doing, but also introduce less moisture back into the same dredge, I don't know. It's like that fourth beer, you know? Probably a bad idea, but damn, it kind of feels good at the time, you know? Like that's kind of, that's kind of cool. All right, so one piece of meat going in and I hope it works out. I think the dry, wet, dry process like did us some, some good here. It tightened up, you know, as expected, but I think we've got overall just a, a much crispier aspect to this. Yeah, I'm feeling good. And you cut out the part where I said it was not, in fact, Wonder Bread. Thank you. Subtle changes, but hopefully important ones and correct ones. If I was at an 83 before, in terms of my own self score, I would say I'm at a 90, going hard. Technique is where I suffered the most. I don't know, let's, let's go with 85 on technique. Parents, I was looking pretty good before. Oh, let's go with a 90. I had a little taste of the, the gravy. So I think we're knocking on 88. That brings the, my average to an 88. This is a dish that Rhoda, I'm just gonna guess, knows intimately. It's a bit of a dangerous game here. Hey. Hello. Weren't you supposed to have a day off today? I came in just for you, Chris. That's what makes me nervous. <laughs> Who made this and what did they make? I called this chicken fried steak. With? With sausage gravy. And who do you think created this deliciousness? I don't know. I never know. Chris, may I present Carla Hall's chicken oh. fried steak with sausage cream gravy. Shit. Well, I literally <laughs> have like spoken to Carla Hall on the phone like twice in the last month. I'm looking at the blondness, the mm -hmm. cutlet is really kind of like presenting fairly different. I think the biggest win of all was like not toasting the bread the second time around. Have you ever had barbecue? Yeah. This is like a very common thing to find on a plate. Okay, yep. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Okay. I didn't, I wouldn't have like, yep, I didn't, yep. You nailed the seasoning mix. However, she seasons the meat, then it goes into cornstarch. I could see that giving you that really nice level of adhesion. Can I honestly sit there and say that I taste onion powder versus garlic powder? We're Not expecting really. you to be able to say that. Yeah, no, well, I can't. So, I mean, cancel the show, like, I can't. And then you said you had buttermilk first. And then I went to egg. Okay, so she actually does both. Then, AP flour and rice flour. The rice flour would account for some of the supreme sort of crunchiness mm -hmm. on the exterior. All right, let's talk about your gravy. Why did you choose Wonder Flour? It said right on the tin that it excels in gravies and soups. Okay, I can't wait to do a side-by-side -side tasting because this is just regular flour. Shit. Breakfast sausage, correct. 
Milk, correct. Lots of pepper. Is there cayenne in there? Yes. I'm pretty impressed by your gravy. I think it. I think you were almost there. Yep. Okay. You got the bread. What kind of onion did you choose? Yellow. This was white. It tasted Bill so pickles. punchy, that onion. You know what's so fascinating about this? Like, look at how the shell of Carla's stayed intact and the meat mm. shrank away from it. I think it's that combination of starches, yeah, like truly created like an architectural shell. Are we tasting the original or mine? Let's do the original first. Mm. So good. I love it. So peppery. It's so peppery. It's delicious. Okay, let's try yours. Mm. <laughs> I don't need your pity. Mm. <laughs> It's good, but the seasoning is like really good in Carla's. No offense. Yours does taste very similar though. I think I'm very happy with my gravy. It's good with pickle. Good with Wonder Bread too, but it has to be Wonder Bread. Everybody knows that. Are you ready for your score? Yeah. For ingredients, you gave yourself a 90. I'm gonna go with an 85, mostly because of the starch situation. Yep. For technique, you gave yourself an 85. Uh-huh. I'm gonna go with 84. Okay. Really glad you got to the dry, wet, dry from your first round. I think that was like really key in getting the, mm -hmm. the coating that you wanted. Appearance, you gave yourself a 90. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a 95. Ooh. I think it looked really good. At least like visually nailed that side of things. And finally, taste. Mm -hmm. You gave yourself an 88. Tasted really similar to the original, but Carla is just a bit more aggressive with that seasoning. So On the steak, yeah. I'm gonna go with an 85. Okay. That brings your total score to 87. Okay. I don't get a whole lot of B pluses in this game, so. I think you should be proud for just being you, Chris. <laughs> for just getting out of bed and putting one foot in front of the other, mm -hmm. showing up. Soldiering on. <laughs> I like this dish, you know why? Because there's some hidden depths to it that really make it unique and singular. So fascinating and gratifying to be put into some other chef's clogs to have to see through their perspective and their context, and this was no exception.